Today in the wood yard, we've got saws and they're steel saws. We've got the new 500i. I'm at my new best friend Tony's house and we're talking saws. Here we go. So today I'm at Tony's house here and he's got lots of toys and uh, he's got steel chainsaws. And a lot of you have been asking me about specifically the 500i because you think I should get one or you wonder why I have Husqvarna's and I don't have steels and the short story is is because my dad bought a Husqvarna so that's what I bought but there's nothing wrong with the steels so we're going to talk about them and he's got them so tell me about your saws what what did you start with Tony and tell me your progression as you went with saws well 35 or 40 years ago I started with the Milwaukee electric chainsaw oh nice <laughs> in in the city and we needed to cut down some shrubs and that worked out very well so after that then we graduated to a gas engine and from there we started a few of the other saws um, I've had other saws by steel um, and Husqvarna uh, both uh, what I found was that uh, the dealer by me was easier to get to a steel than a Husqvarna so that's what we purchased and we've just been going with the pro version instead of the homeowners nothing wrong with the homeowners but I figure if I was going to do a lot of wood cutting right the life on these would be so what did you what did you what did you start with with uh you the steel and now when you bought a gas originally what do you know what brand you had back I then? had a steel and I had a couple of them I had a a Poulon Pro, mm -hmm. and then I bought a uh, a skill or oh, I screwed up on that. Uh, I bought a steel O thirty four. Okay. And then from there, I wanted to get the latest and greatest, and I upgraded. I sold both of those saws, and I bought the two sixty one. Mm -hmm. um, and then what CC is that? Is it 61 CC? It's not, uh, no, it? no, I think it's a 50 CC. So that's the one thing that I know about they don't... steel that to me is confusing. It's like, well, how big is it? Because the number doesn't tell you anything. And it does. <laughs> well, it does to them, but not to us. I know, I know. Okay. Um, so I started with that one. So this is basically like a, a homeowner guy that's going to cut a few face cords of wood a year if, or something like that. It's the one of the lower end of the steel pro saws. Mm -hmm. My suggestion to people always is if you're going to get one saw and you feel it's going to last you the, the rest of your life, uh, the 261 mm -hmm. is a good saw mm -hmm. that will do pretty much anything for you. Right, right. For the, for the average guy. But for the average guy. If you're going to heat with wood where you're going to cut a lot of wood or if you're going to sell wood still or... a good saw to start with yeah yeah exactly i started when i started doing firewood selling and it was a 455 uh rancher husqvarna and it was good but then when i the first time i ran my brother's saw it was a was it a 372 and then i ran a 576 around the same time it was an eye-opening experience it oh, was like it was power. like it was like going from a uh, a little bitty like Volkswagen bug up to a Ferrari like now immediate yep. <laughs> it's like yep. holy smokes and this saw was doing very well I had no problems with it but the bar length on it I had a 20 inch bar and you could probably go one one more I'm not certain of that I'm not a pro on that yeah it probably um, could handle it, one size up yeah maybe one size up but it just didn't i didn't think it might have the power to to go through that so then i went with the 362 mm -hmm. and definitely felt the difference um, so then this is how many cc's compared to that one bigger i'm not sure okay <laughs> i'd have to look that up it's enough bigger. it's enough yeah um I would bet that this is at least I, 10 cc's. Yeah, I would bet this has got to be close to 60-ish, 60, 60 65-ish, somewhere. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because then when I, I got this, I was able to cut the larger larger chunks like I found. Right. And then you so, put, this has got like about a 24, 25-inch bar. Uh, this one is the 25-inch. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's a nice size bar. Mm-hmm. And um, the other saw that I had purchased was the 460 uh, so now is this an older model or a it new model? It is the model? older model. Okay, because it's yeah. square. I know it's square. It's yep. not as smoother. It doesn't have the exactly. It doesn't have Darth Vader kind of look. <laughs> yeah, like they've yeah gone exactly. With. Yeah, exactly. So I, I 
a gentleman was using this to all he was doing was sturgeon uh, fishing and cutting ice. Oh, with right, it. right, right, right. So he did one season of that, and he had a 36 inch bar on it, and uh, I didn't need that, so I switched to an 18 inch bar on it, and it really goes through the wood quickly. Oh, yeah, a lot of you get uh, pretty fast chain speed on something that short with exactly. that much power. Yeah, yep. yeah, there's guys I know that. For around our area, they do sturgeon spraying around here. It's a big thing in Lake Winnebago. And there's a lot of guys I know that will buy a big 660 or they'll buy a Husqvarna uh, 395. 395 just to cut a hole in the ice once a year. Well, this one has a <laughs> hole in the back of it right here. They put a rig on it. And they put a rig on yeah. it so yeah. that they could walk with it yep. and cut the... And he said he didn't need it, sold his ice shanty and... So yeah. I was lucky enough to get it. And so then from there, you go up the to the big boy. The only reason I had uh, the 660 was I thought I was going to get an Alaskan uh, mill. Oh, okay. Uh, and I haven't gotten that yet, uh, but I have gotten a lot of um, a lot of the large wood like we had in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, you pointed out in our video with the um, with the splitter. splitter about the angles the skills or the steel saw that does the angles <laughs> this is the saw that does the angles well it's only because if you start a little bit off with a big long bar there's really no coming back from it well it's, especially it's, if you start a big bar on an incline hill with yeah it's, and if you're polish and if you're polish <laughs> That's true. So yeah, that wouldn't matter. Cookie and Woody will admit to that. Yeah, yeah. So then, obviously, the only thing people really want to know about is, is this one, the 500i. So it you was, just you just got this about a week ago. I, oh. I was on a list for the longest time. A waiting um, list at the place. A waiting place list. Yes. So did they get a bunch of them in? No, no. They got. Um, he got one in, and he said he didn't think he was going to get any more this year. No kidding. They got two or three, or he I think got two last year, and that was it. And no, I asked kidding. him, can I be put on a list? And he said, yeah. Uh, Dan from Back 40 went ahead mm -hmm. and paid for his mm -hmm. uh, ahead of time. That's how he got his. Oh, okay, yeah. He, yeah. he paid for it, and but I was able to be put on a list and fortunate to get this one. Yeah, I know they're hard to come by, and guys certainly want them, that is for sure. It's an experience that's... We're going to start it up later, and we'll do a little bit of cutting. It'll be, it'll be fun, because I've never cut with one. I, last time I stopped in, I started it up, and I just did this a little bit, and it was fun. So it'll be fun to actually put it on some wood. So yeah, that's that's really. And then you got your little your little bitty guy handle. here, top it handle is one. The most, it's the most fun saw. Especially that's all. One ninety-two. Yeah, well, I, yeah. There's nothing to it. I mean, you literally can hold it out at arm's length, and you could cut with it like that. Naturally, it's not recommended. Which is to cut no. with one hand, but no. Uh, a arborist showed me how quickly he could clear a tree right. with that. And that's for those, how does this pop out? Is yeah, there a button? Pops out. Is it a button or something? Nope, I'm, nope, it's just. I'm just too weak to get it, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, it is you really stiff. You use the right tool. It is really stiff. So for those that are arborists, right arborists know this, is that that hook is on there so you can put a lanyard on it and have it on your waist so that when you're cutting, you can drop the saw and then pick it back up and grab it again. But I think I've been thinking about getting a, a, a little bitty saw just for doing limbing to keep at my house actually, or for when I go on a job where something that would be very limmy that I wouldn't want to wade in with a big saw and in, in, in limb. It is when we're doing deer blinds and clearing right. shooting lanes, it's indispensable. Right. I mean that and the pole saw and that's all I really need in the field. Right. I don't right. need anything bigger than that. And for you know, for an average homeowner that's not you know, cutting firewood per se, but it's just doing limbing uh, around the house. That's all you would ever need for Absolutely. most people. It, it would do everything. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, is people don't realize more people are injured by these saws than these saws. Probably. Because people that buy these don't wear chaps, don't wear safety shoes, That's don't true. wear goggles, don't wear earmuffs, don't wear a helmet, don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and they go out there and they're <laughs> slailing around and they don't realize that no matter what size a chainsaw is, it's a dangerous tool. Absolutely. So yeah, you gotta be very careful with them. But, but when you put a, a bigger bar on, you right away have instant respect, don't you? Uh, it's just picking it up. Even, and especially mm -hmm. when you started for the first time, yeah. knowing how much power there is in this saw, actually, if right. you're not afraid, 
you, something's wrong right with you. I, and i always say that you should be afraid of all chainsaws you should be afraid of yes. them and that will that will slow you down Your and make respect. you make you think um it, if you if you go online and you look up chainsaw injuries and look at the pictures you'll know why you need to respect them there's some gory stuff on there yep <laughs> And uh, one thing I, I don't know if we mentioned a little bit, but when I went from uh, just a, a homeowner type saw and you know a 55 cc saw up to a 70 cc saw, it was just incredible. The first time I ran one, it was it was exciting, scary, fun. It was it was an experience. It really is. But from a production standpoint, oh, the difference it's is night and day. Night and day, exactly. Yeah. Well, the first time I was I ran my brother saw this was well, it had to be six or seven years ago. He bought a brand new uh, five seventy six Husqvarna, so it's a seventy six cc saw, and I was cutting wood on a buddy's land, and I had my little fifty five rancher. My brother started on the butt end. We cut a tree down. We st he started at the butt end, and I did the top. I don't think I cut more than two or three branches, just cutting little bitty sticks this big. Cutting, I was just cutting away, not paying attention. I looked over and there was my brother. He had cut the whole thing. I was like, how did he do that? I had no concept that you could cut that fast. Well, when you have a sharp chain yep. and you have a lot of horsepower between this, it's unbelievable, especially when you're when you're doing your videos and we see the chips flying yeah. at us. Yeah. It's just un unreal when you get a, a large CC saw. And the more you cut, the more productive you can get because you know what the saw is capable of, right. you know how to handle it, you know what you should and shouldn't do. It's just so many people want to know all the answers right away on the videos. They ask a lot of questions, which are great, but you cannot discount experience. True. It's just, it's, it's everything. It, it really is, especially when you get into the, the mean machines, the big ones here. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just huge. So uh, what's your first impressions of the 500i? Um, it's the power. It's and is it, the responsiveness and the power. It's just quicker than the other ones. It, it's yeah, the 660, which is a, a 90 cc or 89 cc mm -hmm. saw, uh, compared to that, and that one's 79.3, I believe, or whatever, which isn't that much. 10 cc's or yeah, so, yeah, and not that much great. Yet the responsiveness of that one is. You can feel it. So is it the quickness because of the uh, fuel injection? Is that what no, it is? Or? No, no. Well, the fuel injection, I assume, without the carburetor, is a lot easier to start. Yeah. Uh, what I've noticed is I have 10 tanks of gas through this. Okay. I've broken it in. And they said at about the 10th tank is when you start noticing more responsiveness. Really? And um, I, I, I feel that it's res it was from the get-go, <laughs> get it was an awesome saw. Yeah, yeah. What's any of the negatives you have to say about any of the saws? What don't you like or anything that stood out that you wish was a little different or is there really nothing that you can I, think I of? I can't, you know, like a, like your Husqvarna saws or whatever, it's what you're used to. Yeah. Um, it's starting, you know, that's the big thing. If it starts, there's always complaints about chainsaws not starting. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. Do you have the right fuel in it? How long has it been sitting? You mm -hmm. know, a, a number. How, do you know how to properly start your saw? Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing is, like you say, you can't discount um, um, experience. working right, experience. Right, right. Exactly. Well, I know with my Husqvarna is when I go to start them, if it's a cold start, you got to you got to choke it because obviously I don't have feeling. You choke it, and usually it's two, maybe three pulls, and it'll fart. Mm -hmm. Push the choke in, that's and it. then it's one, maybe two pulls, and it started. That's usually the routine. Exactly. But if you screw something up in there with the choke not having it, or push it in too soon, or or then whatever it, it is, out. it'll flood out. Yeah, and and especially if it's a hot saw, if you've been running it a lot and you go to start it. And if you don't do it just right, I mean, you got to get on your gas right away to give it gas. That's it, it. it seems like it floods out once well, in a while. like this 460, unlike the newer ones, has four different settings on it. Okay. So you go to full choke. The minute it burps after mm -hmm. the second or third, you know, pull, mm -hmm. then you crank it up to the next one, oh, the next okay. uh, uh, setting on there. So where is that on? There? It's oh, right, right on the bottom. Right yep, on I the see bottom it. here. Yep, I see it. Yep. And you have to detent it. You know, pull it all the way down. Yep. Then when you get that burp, lift it up once, right. and then once you. Then oh, it's automatic. So it's automatic. Yeah, it's home. Yeah, a lot of them now are automatic where you squeeze it. Yeah, and whereas the newer off. ones only have three settings choke and then run. Right. 
Right. Yeah. The the difference that I'm hearing from people too on steel versus Husqvarna is why do the steel have to shut off pushing upward instead of downward? Whereas the Husqvarna, it's it's not intuitive. It isn't. It, and I, I I guess I'd agree with that. That I like the fact that you just flip it down. Um, whereas the new saw here, mm -hmm. there's the push button. So. That's easy. All you yeah, do just push the button. is press the button. Uh, the stop, stop, start is the same button. Yep. Just push it, yeah. Actually, yeah. there's no start. It's just a stop, yeah. You just it's, primer? It's this button right here. So it's just primer and start it. You don't have to push anything. Got it. And well, you just yep. do the primer bulb eight times. And oh, eight, eight is the sequence. Eight is okay. what the book calls for. Okay, now the one thing I've heard is people having problems with the air cleaner. Okay. Getting enough air to it. That's the one thing that I've seen. Um, I heard that the looseness of this, uh, how, how loose these, these housings were, mm -hmm. at least first generation, and I don't know whether they've changed them. Cotton Top 03 mm -hmm. calls this, but I used the fix that he did right in there. Used a pool noodle, cut it to quarter of an inch, and it, it's tight against the mm -hmm. air filter. Yep. And like I say, I've got 10 tanks through it and I've had no issues. I've had no issues with it loosening up. What I like about the, the catch on this, uh, or the, the securing knob, whatever you would call this, kind of, what would you call this, the screw, <laughs> whatever it is, it's a half a turn and it's off. Where, whereas, you know, you go, even going on, that's it, it's As on. As opposed to no, this one. Well, mine, I gotta screw the whole thing out. And this or, one. Or, well, on, on my air cleaner, I have to screw it out, but I have to take my whole top off. You got a separate unit oh, on here. Exactly, to, this one I have to take off. Sure, and you gotta use screws. And I have to use so the got, scrunch. Right, and I've got those quick clips. You just pop the clips off. Right. And on my 576, there's four of them. There's two front, two back, and on the 572, there's two front and one back, but you pop them and then you lift it off to get it. But it's all one housing. But I like this. This is nice. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. It's a very good design. That's definitely a thumbs up. The other thing that, that I noticed and I like about Hus I mean the steels over the Husqvarna's is the dogs. They're just they're just more serious. And the fact that you and they come with both sides, right? Yeah. Seeing on the Husqvarna's you only got one side. If you want to get other ones, you can put other ones on and bigger ones, but I've always been more impressed with the, the steels. Um, big dogs, especially on that 880, right? Uh, 660. 660. 660. Yeah, that those are just those are serious. That's a like, yeah. that's like a medieval weapon there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we really truly have bark that would here in the Midwest that really count. I mean, it's, it's nice well, when you're working on a tree uh, and you can right. dig those in, but we don't have the thick bark like they do out west. The, the reason why I think those are better and I'd like to put bigger ones on my saws is a lot of the dead oak that I cut. Because uh, you go just go in and you go to you know, wrap your saw as you're doing your downstroke on, or whatever you're doing, but you go to, to do your power stroke on it coming through the wood and the bark peels off. Yeah. And there's, the teeth don't go in deep enough or solid enough or they're not long enough that you, lo you lose your grip quite. I, know I lose my grip quite a bit on, on the tree itself with the saw. Whereas if you have the bigger dogs, I think you slam it in and it's in. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that, and I haven't really cut much with uh, uh, you know, bigger dogs like that, but that's just something that I've noticed. Um, and that thing recently too that Husqvarna switched to is they switched to the, 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 the tank, um, what do you call these? The, fuel. the covers, the fuel covers, mm -hmm. yeah. Where they flip up. So how did how does this work? Same just flips thing. up, flips that up. One flips up. Yep. That's quarter what I thought. Turn. Yep. yep. See, so I like the quarter turn thing too. But the, in the Husqvarna, you got to actually unscrew it again. Mm -hmm. But it does flip up now. But it's a different design. But that's nice. I well, do that's like that. The old style, right? like this, yep. where you have to use the wrench or your scrunch right. in here and, right. and undo it. You know. But these, I really like them. They are very convenient. Right. Some people say they don't like them because they leak. I and don't they, have that problem. I have replaced a few of the oil filler caps that oh, okay. leaked and one of the in small engine repair guys said that's the number one cause of oil when you have it leaking in your case mm -hmm. or on the ground is that these things go bad. Right, right. The seal goes bad. Right. Right. Is it like, it must be a gasket in there. Mm -hmm. But I, I noticed this 500i does have a little leakage there, but if you can't smell gas, you're not a man, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Male perfume? <laughs> You've got to have some perfume. I know as soon as I get home every day, my wife knows exactly what I've been doing. She knows if I've been splitting wood, because it's a different smell than if I was cutting wood, because cutting wood, you get that two-cycle smell. She's oh. like, you were cutting all day. Take Get undressed out in the garage. <laughs> oh, boy. Because <laughs> when I come home, it's it's bad. And, and you get nose blind yourself, That's, you know. That is true. Because you're, you're in it all day. You don't even notice. So, <laughs> so true. Anyway, we're going to do some... We're going to do a little bit of starting the saw up and do a little bit of cutting now. When you go down, you have a fan tail going in almost eight feet in the air. Yeah. That is... It's soft maple. Oh, it is soft <laughs> maple, huh? Yeah. See the spalding on it? Uh-huh. Um, I gave it everything. I, I mean, I pushed it, and it ate it right up. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, I know it'll be interesting on the... The locust, yeah. The locust. Yeah, it's got balls. Oh, yeah. It doesn't bog down. No, no. That it yeah. doesn't. Cool. See. There I forced it. I can yeah, I saw it. that. But that's as hard as that's 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 pushing hard. Did you get some chips on you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice too, but there's a difference. Wait! There's a pretty big difference. It cuts good. Oh yeah. But it's not it's not that. No. No. It's still nice though. <laughs> What a difference. This is like a child's toy. <laughs> I mean, it cuts, but it's like half the saw compared to uh, the 500 or the other one. I mean, it cuts, but not even close. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, it's nice. I still like the 500i. <laughs> So my first impression of this one is it's got torque. I mean, it's not fast, but it's just got power. I mean, it's like a tank. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like four wheel drive, just turning, but it's not a enduro, you know, high speed. It's, it's a, it's just go. So cool though, for cutting big stuff would be nice. So here we are with Cookie Woody. Cookie and Woody in the background. Um, that was fun. Well, I hope you did. Well, I've never ran stills before. I mean, I've never really run them. I've always had Huskies or Poulans or <laughs> John Shreds. Well, my dad had a John Shred years ago. I think that's the first saw I ever cut with when I was like a teenager, he had a John Shred, which was a nice saw. And his McCulloch, I ran that long time ago. But I've always had Huskies for such a long time. But my impressions are they're chainsaws and they cut. And really? I, and I like them. Yeah, they really cut, yeah. No, that new 500i is really nice. The, the weight of it is the first impression. It just seems light, and it's it's got a lot of high-end torque. And, and this is my impression. It's similar to a Husqvarna. Really? That it's got that instant speed, and it's just got that really high end. It seems like the RPM is there. Whereas your other ones, they seem to have power, but I don't know that they have that that whiny high-end, like, you know, on a, like a motorcycle mm -hmm. that's like a, in like a... You know, the ones that are, you know, the off-roading stuff that's right. really, really high, high-end, high screaming. Like, it's kind of like, like compare the big saw is almost like a Harley. Right. And your 500 is like a crotch rocket. Yeah. That's how I, that's my, that was my, my impression as I was running them. So, that was fun. Thanks for letting me play with your toys. You betcha. <laughs> Mom told us to share. Yeah, well, I'm thinking, I'm just going to try and decide which one I'm taking home. Well, anything's possible. <laughs> we are negotiable. I suppose you can, you can uh, always sell it, and make some money, and buy another one cheaper. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I would do. Yeah, that was fun. We cut some cookies, and we did, that was just maple we were cutting. It was a soft maple, but just for fun, just to kind of try them out, so I could get an idea of what they do. But yeah, they all cut really nice. The 500 though is is a sweet saw. I really like it a lot. But of all of them, I would have to say, um, looking at them. So the 500 obviously was the nicest, fastest, screamy one. Um, the 261, that's more, that's your homeowner size one, right? Right, that's the beginning pro saw, yep. or one of the first ones. Okay, and then this uh, 362, where does that fall? That's after that, right? It's right after the 261. Right. Is the 362. Right. And then the 460 is the one that you cut that you said was yep. real throaty. And oh, yeah, that very to me. Very responsive. Yeah, to me that was a lot like... Uh, the 500. I mean, that's to me was like the closest. Well, on, in my experience, anyway. Several people have commented that the new 462 is almost faster than the 500. Interesting. Well, so maybe that's the one to get then. Who knows? <laughs> and so you're switching no. from a Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, on, I don't know about on switching. Live YouTube. I'm not saying I'm switching. I'm just saying it's possible I could go both ways. Both ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, the MS660 um, is like driving a Sherman tank. It's heavy and just goes, goes, goes. It's like, uh, like I said, it's like a four-wheel drive, just, just goes. That, and it's a heavy, heavy saw to manage. Uh, well, especially with the 36 inch. Yeah, this this big bar is is insane as far for me anyway. Yeah. It just is long. It's just way more saw than what I think I need for what I do. I mean, yeah, if you're cutting, if you're cutting big trees and you're an arborist, or if you're a West Coast guy cutting, you know, the big dug firs and stuff. Yeah, I can see where you'd want a, a big bar so you don't have to double cut or anything like that. But I mean, you saw the videos of my brother exactly. cutting those big white pines. He has a 20 inch bar. He started, you know, he cut his wedge and he bored in and then he just swung it all the way around and you get a 40 inch cut. That's true. And the tree's gonna go down. <laughs> Um, One way or the other. And, and, and you 
we kind of talked about this a little bit. You feel the same way I do that a, a, a 24, 25 to maybe 28 inches is about the sweet spot. For, we, for us. For us, right. For our size. Right. We're not going to hit the ground with it. Right. We don't have to bend as much. Right. So it's a much more ergonomic saw. And the 500 has a 25 inch bar. Right, 25 yeah. inch. And that's really a nice size bar. And I'm, and I switched over years ago to cutting with a 24 inch bar on my Huskies and, and I like it a lot. I, the big thing I notice is my back just doesn't get as tired. I'm just not bending as much. That's it. Um, but again, on the other hand, I don't want to go ever a lot longer because I've run a couple saws that were 28 inches and you, you, you hit the ground a lot more and yeah. you got to, that tip is just, and you especially in the brush. When you're, if you're cutting trees, actual trees down in the woods, even with a 24 inch bar, it's like you got to, sometimes you got to pull back and then go in and then pull yeah. back. You can't just swing it around freely like you can with a, a 18 or a 20 inch bar where you're you just you know you don't you don't For have to worry about it. For a homeowner, 20 inch is probably the I, max that you'd want to go. Yeah, 18 yeah. is probably yeah. especially if you're not used to saws. 20 is probably the most popular around that I see. Right. But then once again, depending on how tall you are, the 24, 25 is definitely. Uh, the sweet spot, as you said. Yep, I would agree totally. Well, thanks for having me here today, Tony. You betcha. Um, we're going to come back and do some more stuff and playing with more toys because you have more toys, don't you? I think so. So that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Please hit the buttons. You know what to do. Um, tomorrow I'll be back in the wood yard. You should be back in the wood yard doing some cutting yourself. Get outside, do some cutting, and uh, see you tomorrow. Good night. Irene. <laughs>